Time for Horsham District, and after not playing for uh, probably four weeks, uh, this fella probably has forgotten uh, how to kick a footy because he doesn't train. It's Big Peter Weir. How are you, mate? Oh, you're a bit hard on me, Flo, man. I'll get there occasionally, but I'm um, <laughs> feeling really good this week with much-needed widespread rain, so that's good for all the farmers in the area, and also um, it's good to know that footy's back on and open the slather with the crowds up to a 1,000, so I don't think we'll have any troubles at Japarit this weekend. No troubles there at all, but uh, just thinking about it, Weary, I know that the training track, uh, has there been many out on the track um, in preparation for this weekend? Is there a fair bit of enthusiasm around people just itching to get back? Yeah, definitely, I think. Unlike last season where we got to the first practice match and the league was cancelled, um, people are a lot more invested in it this year with six games in and the season's really starting to take shape on the footy field and on the netball courts across the league. And not only are you interested how you're going to go up against opposition, just seeing how other clubs are shaping up against each other. So everyone's keen to get things back underway and yeah, there's um, good commitment to the club again over the last couple of weeks and we'll hit the ground running hopefully this weekend. Uh, good stuff. And Weary, uh, with that rain that everyone's had, uh, it's been around about the half inch uh, as uh, a, a number, but some have had a bit more than that. Yeah, I think further south towards Horsham and out on the Kalki Plains, they've had closer to their 30 or 40 mil, and then over towards Nil, there's isolated falls of 50 mil. So that definitely gets us back in the game as farmers. And yeah, looking forward to a wet winter, hopefully, and some more rain in the spring, just apart from on the weekends when we're trying to get a kick. <laughs> Radio sounds good. There might be some training happening towards finals time then for the big man. But hey, what about the girls? Are they out training? And uh, how do the uh, girls from the Storm look? How important is it for them? Uh, they're facing uh, like some real challenges too as they get back on the court. Yeah, they definitely are. None bigger than this weekend against Stall. They've had a bit of success against Stall over the last couple of years and this year if they are looking to play finals, it's something like Stall's spot they need to get. So it's a big game on the netball court for the A graders. Oh, fantastic stuff. Hey, Weary, we'll have a look at uh, what is this week's rounds because it's been such a long time. We've uh, already covered off um, on where everyone is at previously and on previous games from four weeks ago. So looking at it, Harrow, Balmoral, and I might just say that the, um, the league has since updated the, the game day page where we put our content up yesterday for the weekend. So um, Harrow, Balmoral uh, aren't playing to power at Rainbow. As I said yesterday, they are actually playing Taylor's Lake with that revised um, that league fixture. How do you think um, that Taylor Slake will go? I reckon Harrow might be in for a big win. Yeah, I think Harrow boys will be too good. I can just imagine Mickey Phelan taking a lot of marks across half back and teaming up well with Anthony Close just to stop the ball entering the Taylor's Lake forward line and then up the other end just on the back of repeat, um, repeat entries. I think the Harrow boys will kick a big score and have a good win against Taylor's Lake. Yeah, it's going to be a tough outing I think for the red and white but um, what about Natty Mark? They come up against La Harum and gee, for the sheep paddockers down there at the showground they should get a win. Yeah, I think they will. I think it, Laharam will know Natty Muck can, when they're at their best, they're one of the best teams in the comp, but they can also let you in the door if they're having a down week. So Laharam will go there thinking that if Natty Muck aren't at their best, they can maybe sneak a win. And I think we will see some upsets um, on the back of this break across all different leagues. So maybe this could be the upset in the Horsham District League and Laharam get through. But if Natty Muck are anywhere near their best, they should win. All right. Now, this is interesting because um, that the uh, very much improved Rapanya go over to Narajua Kwantong to the Bomberland. And this is match of the round. It is the top of the table clash. We really see how good the Panthers are. We know how good the Bombers have been this year. Are the Panthers in the mix with the Bombers? Yeah, I definitely think they are. It'll depend whether they've got anyone affected but with the COVID restrictions with um, a fair few of their recruits but let's hope they're all out on the park and everyone's fit and it should be a really really great game of footy and a finals like game of footy so early in the season and both coaches will really see where their teams are at and how they handle a um, side of equal ability and I think yeah, it should be a ripping contest at home you'd probably just have to go to Raju or Kwantung but I reckon Rapanyip will take it right up to them and yeah it should be a great game of footy. All right, now Peter Weir is talking uh, the uh, very important games this weekend with the Horsham District Football League and Eden Hope Apsley take on the Keys down at Apsley. Gee, this looks like the Keys, a good road trip for them down south into the Wartree paddocks of that part of the world. And uh, tell you what, I reckon they'll come back with the winner's feeling. 
Yeah, I think they will. I think um, Calcay will be too good down there. It'll be interesting how Eden Hope bounce back after this uh, little break in the season. And I think they'll be um, a bit improved. But, yeah, the Calcay boys won't have dropped off at all. We know that. And I think um, the main thing the Eden Hope coach and supporters will be looking for is just a good, consistent effort across the four quarters. All right, our good friends over there at Caniva Lior, the Cougars. They play Pimpinayo a chance at Caniva for these boys to get a win. They can just stay in touch with everyone with a win over Pimpinayo, but the uh, equally the Tigers will come out after a few weeks off and they might just uh, travel up that Western Highway in trouble, the Cougars. Yeah, I think the Tigers will um, take a bit of confidence up there, but the um, um, Caniva boys will be used to welcoming the Tigers and they won't be quite as good as the Mandala ones that they're used to. And I yep. think... Um, I think the Caniva boys will be too good and it's a chance for them after a bit of a shaky start in the league to really um, get their season and um, things back on track and um, start the second half of the season well. All right, now let's have a look at the Japarit Rainbow Report, uh, the attack on the Swifts in senior footy. This probably is the second match of the round because if you look at a win for you guys here and Swifts equally, it really keeps you right in touch with the second place on the ladder. Yeah, I think it's a massive game. We're both four and two and still bring a really finals type game of footy and over the years we've had always close games. It's never more than three or four goals either way and Scotty Carey and his boys will bring a great game uh, style of footy up to Japarit on the weekend and it should be a a ripping contest and yeah, it's um, important we get on top of their big man. Hargraves is a good player and Toddy Matthews is kicking goals and Ben Martin's always a big target down there for him. He doesn't miss when he gets the ball. So it's going to be a really good contest and I expect it to be a close one, Flo Man. Oh, I reckon it is. Tell you what, the weather conditions, um, if it does continue to have some showers, might play into the Swift's hands uh, on your dry deck normally, but Japan, it won't be that dry. No, I think, um, yeah, Stall, they've got a good mix of bigs and smalls, so they're a pretty um, versatile sort of team. But we're shaping up the similar way this this year as well, Flo Man. So I think conditions either way, it should be an even and good contest. All right. I reckon the Storm can get home over the Swifts. Uh, it's going to be an absolute beauty. The twos, I don't fancy the chances of the lads. I know that uh, you've had uh, some incredibly uh, difficult games and hard to get uh, with the seeding season. I guess that's nearly passed. So have you got numbers ready for a reserve side? Yeah, we definitely do. Um, fortunately for the reserves this week, there's um, a full list of um, availability. So all of a sudden there's four or five really good senior players go back into the reserves team. And as you know, the stall boys in the twos aren't the best at travelling and the trip up to Japan might trim a few off. So I'm actually going to go for an upset in this game and I think the twos boys can get their first win. Woohoo, that's a huge call from Weary, but he's been out on the track. Uh, we're not sure how much of uh, him on the track, but maybe the track tour is probably uh, more closer to it, Weary. I'd say so, fly man. <laughs> uh, getting up and down the steps is good exercise. Hey, looking at the 17s, the Swifts are second place. They take on the sixth place, Japarit Rainbow. Massive improvement on your uh, 17s. And probably a, a full list or good list of your 17 players, some of which have been playing up in reserves and senior footy. So uh, is there a chance that they could take it up to the second place, Swifts? Yeah, Stoll have always got really good juniors and we'll see them in the senior grade as well. The Stoll juniors that come through the years, which will give them some good depth. And fortunately for our boys this um, weekend, I think a couple of the Warwick Nabil young fellas are going to come over and give us a hand. But I still don't think it'd be enough to beat a Stoll team that's undefeated in the under-17s. All right, the young lads, they've tasted victory. They've even seen goals sail over the uh, fellas' heads who put up the flags. Now these lads are coming out against a, a Swiss side who are fourth on the ladder. Can the ninth place Japarit Rainbow on a winning streak, if you don't mind, can they continue? Yeah, I think they can. I think the um, under-14s will have a really good contest here against the um, Stall boys. Obviously, the Stall boys are probably going to be a little bit too strong, but the under-14 boys have just been bottling all this energy for the last month, and they'll really um, bring all that out on the field for the first game on um first game back this weekend <laughs> oh dear could the excitement machine is those young kids they really have been fantastic uh, in their green outfit and uh, celebrating the goals that they've been kicking uh, great photos too that have been posted up on uh, your uh, facebook page well weary i'm looking forward to it um uh, i guess getting back uh, seeding just about done rainfall around the place uh, an air of optimism about the horsham district 
Oh, definitely. There's a good feeling around, but none better than being back playing footy. None better. And the netball girls, too. They've got some challenges ahead. I'm sure that it's going to be a big day down at Japarit on Saturday. Get down there. Uh, the crowd limit is 1,000, but I reckon you'd be safe there, Weary. I reckon amongst the Rainbow Japarit faithful, even with the opposition coming, it'd be just touch and go. You might you might find it with a very big number come out. They might be pressing buttons at the gate. Yeah, let's hope they all stay there and we're not five goals down at half time and all the locals go home. But uh, it should be a great contest and hopefully everyone who can make the game gets there and supports us. Uh, good stuff. Peter Weir, talking Horsham District football.